Good morning, friends. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Hey, thanks for joining me on this Tuesday following Christmas. Hey, grab a good cup of coffee and rejoin me in the book of Revelation. We've made it to the last chapter, chapter number 22. And as you're getting there, I want to say what a wonderful time it's been spending time with family and friends over the Christmas holidays while also working on getting Sue through her recovery process from surgery and and just uh, just enjoying the blessings of God during this season. We had a great time with the folks at Beulah Baptist Church on Sunday. I'm already scheduled to preach there this coming Sunday while Pastor Todd Fletcher and Stephanie were on vacation, but uh, Todd came down with the flu, and so he was contagious and couldn't be there, and no one else had scheduled me for Christmas Eve. Who schedules your direct permissions for a Christmas Eve service? Uh, nobody. <laughs> so I was free and able to help fill in this past week. So uh, what a blessing it has been to be able to, to serve and to work during this time, as well as to enjoy the blessings of God from this holiday when we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's been a great time. We still have some more of that gathering to come here in, in the, the days ahead. But in the meantime, you keep praying for some of those folks. Our Pastor Josh Baker at Pea Ridge has been sick during this time, as well as Todd Fletcher and several others. So uh, God's blessings on each and every one of you servants of the Lord as you try to maintain your health in these days. And then, of course, a special prayer request for Jim and Sherry Mercer coming back from that wonderful Christmas cruise uh, with COVID. So uh, God bless y'all as well as you try to get get over that experience. Oh, listen, friends, it's uh, it's the way things operate in this day and age as we look around at one another just struggling through these times of challenge, these times of uh, still wrestling with the curse that we have upon planet Earth, the weather issues. It's pouring down rain here this morning. Uh, some of you are buried in snow. Others are in drought. It's just just comes with the territory, doesn't it? But in the passage we're going to look at today, we're going to see how that will all come to an end shortly, and we'll see what the world, the universe is going to look like in its ultimate ultimate plan and purpose of God. So with that thought in mind, we're going to get straight to Revelation chapter 22 and begin in verse number one. John writes, then he, speaking of that angel he was interacting with, he showed me the river, the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the city's main street. Tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of nations, the heal, healing the nations, and there will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. People will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun because the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. What a beautiful picture, especially as we're nearing the end of the, the Holy Bible and the last book being Revelation. As we're nearing the end, we see the promises of God being fulfilled in all their glory. And this one is especially poignant that's the bringing of light and the bringing of healing for the nation. So don't we need that healing? Because right now it seems like pain and suffering are what's being handed out by the governments that are supposed to be there for our benefit, for our good. It seems like all around the world, the wicked people often are in charge rather than the righteous. And the times when the righteous are in charge because we are not perfect, doesn't mean they'll always make the right decisions. And so we struggle with this throughout our lifetimes. We struggle with the health issues, the circumstance issues, the wars, the rumors of wars, all the things that come with living in this cursed world. But the Bible here says that one day that curse is going to be lifted. And one neat application of that is this picture of how God is the light in this new heaven and new earth. 
so that John says night will be no more. People won't even need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun because the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. Now, John saw something in this city that was unusual to him. Keep in mind, he came from the day in which he had to light a candle or a lamp to be able to see at night. The darkness covered everything at night. He had never seen a completely illuminated city as we have today. And yet we have only a smattering of what it would be like to have light all the time. Well, that's what John saw in this new creation. Light, and it's everywhere. The source of light, the power source, has to be one that's consistent. Right now we're having all kinds of issues because of the Green Kingdom's emphasis on uh, natural forms of energy that sometimes fail. And some of you have been there. You've been in the cities where the blackouts or brownouts are occurring. And we've got places all over this planet where you can't really depend on the power sources all the time. You just have to roll with it. Sometimes you've got power and you can have light, and sometimes you don't. Well, the Bible's telling us one day there's going to be no need for light because the ultimate power source will be with us. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is the one that we just celebrated at Christmas, the celebration of his birth, a celebration that continues even this week. But what kind of person is he? I'm reminded of what it says in the Gospel of John. When we go back there, uh, even in chapter number 8, Jesus is telling us something about himself. In fact, if you follow all those I am's through the Gospel of John, you'll find a number of revelations about the Lord. This one, I think, though, quite wonderfully matches up with this passage from Revelation. There in verse number 12, Jesus spoke to them again, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Isn't this beautiful? Jesus has already told us he's the light of the world. Of course, that can be taken a number of ways. When the light breaks through in your own heart and your own spirit, all of a sudden things seem right. It's all of a sudden the pieces of the giant jigsaw puzzle start coming together and you understand. And all of a sudden you recognize Jesus as who he is, our Savior, our Messiah, our Lord. And when you put your faith and trust in him, it changes everything and suddenly the light turns on. And that's why Jesus said to his disciples as he's preaching in the Sermon on the Mount that you are the light of the world. Not because you're the source of the light, not because you're producing that light, but because you're able to reflect that light that's now come into your heart and into your life. You have become the one who shares the light of Jesus. But there's something very real, genuine, and physical about the light that comes from the Lord, as is demonstrated here in the brand new creation. When the curse is removed and Jesus is with us, remember he said, I'll be with you and be your God, then all of a sudden everything lights up. Well, right now it seems like much of the problems that are caused in the world is from people wanting to drive us into darkness, live from darkness, to keep us uninformed and out of the loop to even know what's going on, and the darkness sometimes reigns. Well, friends, guess what? Here's our greatest Christmas present to thank God for today. One day, the darkness will be removed. One day, all will be light. And what, where does that light come from? What's the power source? It's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You have a great day and have a wonderful Christmas season as you finish out 2023. And tomorrow, once again, we'll wake up in God's word.